Yeah, my name is Veronica, and I am CEO of Cenober. And I'm here today to talk to you uh, about something I'm very passionate about. I'm passionate about maintain Sweden to maintain the number one hub for fintech development. Uh, if you don't know that Sweden is a financial hub for, or is a hub for financial IT, I'm very sure you're not alone, because this is something that is extremely unknown in Sweden, but is extremely known outside of Sweden. And I'll tell you a little bit of the story, how we become this number one uh, within the fintech space. 1985, OM, the uh, option exchange in Sweden, they were the first exchange globally to introduce electronic trading. So prior to that, all trading was manually on, man on trading floors or on the curb or by the phone or by the fax. But they were developing electronic trading systems. Uh, and they found a way to export those uh, to other exchanges globally. At the same point in time, uh, the banks in Sweden were very, very more high-tech than banks outside of Sweden. Uh, and, and out of those... Uh, and due to, the, due to those two occasions, uh, another hundred companies or so have been created in Sweden within the fintech space. Around 90% of what we develop is exported. And that's why it's more known in places like London, in Frankfurt, in New York, than it is in Sweden. Because they are the ones using our technology. <coughs> and as I said, this was 1985, and uh, this is now some 30 years later, and we will not maintain the number one position if we don't actively do something. Um, and that's why we have this idea of building a financial IT cluster. Before I go into why I think we need a cluster, I just tell you some stories about the financial ecosystem that we work in and that we live in. Maybe you all remember September 2008, when Lehman Brothers defaulted. This was an uh, event that then caused some seven years of financial crisis. And people were then surprised, but if you think of it now afterwards, it wasn't very strange. So, as I said, 1985, we started to develop electronic trading systems. Uh, around the sam same time frame, we also developed something called clearing systems that actually calculates the risk on the portfolio that, uh, um, uh, that you, you create when you are trading. And in the 1980s, in the 1990s, the trading was still manual. It w we did it on trading floors, we called up by phones, we did it by faxes. No one really defaulted within seconds. So it was okay to calculate the risk once a day, or so twice a day. In 2008, when Lima Brothers defaulted, company could default it in hundreds of seconds. Because it, the world now had went electronically. It was the concept of high-frequency traders. And, and then, when you can default in 100 or so seconds, I don't think it's okay to calculate your risk once a day. <coughs> and the financial ecosystem is, is actually global and is built on trust. If I'm going to invest my money in something, I want to know that it's reliable. And it just showed that it wasn't reliable. So what we did at Snowbird, we started to develop something that we call a real-time clearing system that actually can calculate the risk on your portfolios in real time. <coughs> By doing that, you increase the confidence again, and the confidence in the financial ecosystem and the financial markets. One of the first customers that we got was the Brazilian exchange, BMNF Bovespa, to whom we have delivered the world's largest clearing project. And uh, they had four different systems that they wanted to combine into one system and to calculate risk in real time. And this was a huge success story, and more or less every clearinghouse globally have watched this project. The first day in operation, uh, BMNF Bo Vespa could free up collateral, so money that you put in uh, to cover the risk for your trading, to a value of $9 billion just for the Brazilian market. 
Yeah. And this is what happens when you use modern technology, when you can calculate your risk in real time. <coughs> Another company that we got to work with was, or is the London Metal Exchange. Uh, they set up their new clearing house, LME Clear. They are the European's most modern clearing house, and all of their technology is developed and delivered out of Umeå. And another funny story with the Lehman Brothers is actually that uh, <laughs> that Lehman Brothers is one of the reasons we are in Umeå. Because there was a team, because of the good engineering uh, history and background and the good university we have here, there was a team working for Lehman Brothers. Uh, and when they then defaulted, this team came to belong to the Japanese investment bank Nomura. And some three years ago, when Nomura more or less decided to close down its equity trading, uh, we had the uh, pleasure or the opportunity to take over this team. And they are, since three years back, our colleagues. And it's in Umeå that we're growing quickest. <coughs> So why do I think that we need a cluster to maintain our number one position? I think that we need uh, creativity, we need competence, we need competition uh, in one single place, because I think that drives innovation, and we need innovation. Because it's not about having the right products today, if we don't have the right people, the right knowledge, the right innovation, the right culture, we will not have the right products tomorrow. You can also view cluster as brain hubs, because uh, this is very smart people with unique brains, every, every one of them. And it's a very interesting from a polit politician point of view, so if you compare those brain hubs and the jobs that we create in a brain hub, <coughs> with, for example, a job in a manufacturing business, it's a huge difference. Because as a company, you can decide from one day to another to move your production from Umeå to Poland or to somewhere else where they pay less. But you just don't move 500 families with competences. So once the competence is here, it's here. And for every single job, and this is proven um, Every single job that you create in a brain hub like this, you create additional three jobs because those people, they move here, they have to eat, they have to buy their food, they have to have kids in daycare, <coughs> they have to drive their cars, they have to go to movies, they have to go to restaurants, and so on. And the companies uh, get visitors, and they need to fly here, and they need to stay at hotels, and they need to eat at restaurants. So for every single job that we create in such a brain hub, we are creating additional three jobs. And when I'm visualizing this, and when I see what can this be in the future, I compare it with Kista in Sweden. Uh, some 30 years ago, there were a couple of guys that set up a company in Kista because of it, it has its radio tower, and they were building techniques around radio towers. Kista is uh, today one of three main hubs for ICT technology. And they are world leading, and all the innovation is made out of Shista for every single component in the world. Um, Asian companies is setting up their business there because the competence is there. And this is what we would like to create in Umeå. And uh, we have made a very good start. We have got some very good traction with the municipal and with the university and also within other companies within the same industry as we. <coughs> so why did we choose Umeå? We chose Umeå for many, many reasons. Um, Umeå is actually exporting talents today. So we have a great university up here that attracts students, brilliant students, the great and the best students, but we don't have enough job to make them stay once they graduated. So today, Umeå is an exporter of competence. And, and uh, so, which is very good if you want to, if you as an employee are looking for the best talents. So we have a great pool of, of uh, intelligent students to, to choose from. We also 
have an extremely good working climate with the UMU University. <coughs> so um, uh, I'm a developer myself, my back, I have a technical background and I study computer science. And I didn't study computer science in the context of anything. So I, I, when I graduated, I was a developer. And all I learned, I learned about the financial systems, I learned at Sonoma. But when we came here, the university said, but education, that's our thing, that sh we should do that. So we have now established together with them uh, an education where you can have a master degree in financial IT. We are actually combining the School of Economics with the Technical University and you're all of a sudden a developer in the context of something and you understand the market and the world in what you are creating. I think the urbanization is also another reason why Umeå is attractive uh, from our point of view. Because more and more people are moving to Umeå and it's growing, uh, which is a very good thing if you want to create things. We have come, as I said, a very long way in a very short time, but it's uh, a long, long, long way to go. And uh, if you want to join our journey, you're more than welcome and you will be part of the team. And hopefully in the future, Umeå and Sweden is still the number one within the fintech space. Thanks for listening.